Okay, here we go. A recent study showed that 143 of 1,945 1, people experienced adverse effects from their blood pressure medication. Write a confidence interval for 80%, 90%, 95% regarding the proportion of people who experience adverse effects from their blood pressure medication. Round your numbers to three decimal places. Really quick. Do you know anybody on blood pressure medication? Did you know that just about everybody, when they get to about the age of 70, 75, just about everybody in America is on blood pressure medication? I mean, this is one of the reasons why uh, the expected life um, as, as increase for so many people is because, you know, just handling heart disease. And so being able to control blood pressure has been a big deal, a big part of that, okay? So, but there are some adverse side effects that, that happen because of it. And uh, I know for my, uh, um, for my neighbor, uh, he started falling down a lot. So he would get times where, where he would, uh, his blood pressure would be lower and it, he wouldn't get as much blood through his body. He'd get these dizzy spells where he'd fall over. I came over one day, he, he'd broken his collarbone, so... Mm. You know, you, you do have some, some, some side effects that you got to kind of regulate. So, let's start off. Here we go. If you see, write a confidence interval, here's what you want. You want the percent, plus or minus, your z-score times sigma. That's what we want. It's as simple as that. How do I figure out my initial percent? 143 divided by 1,945. Let's try that. Turn it on, clear, and I go 143 divided by 1,945, and I've got 0.074. Can we go 0.074? Everybody okay with that? All right, so 0.074. Plus or minus, and we're going to need z-scores, okay? I need three of them. So I need an 80%. I need a 90, and I need a 95, okay? So if I'm doing 80, what's over here and what's over here? 10 and 10, so what is this mark right there? 90, can somebody tell me the z-score for 90? 1.28, should already have it written down. Good. So 90, I would have 5 and 5, so this pi would be 95. What's the z-score for 95? 1.645, and then 95, that'll be 2.5 and 2.5. So it'll be 97.5. What's the Z score for 97.5? 1. What? 96. So those are your three Z scores. So true or false, I have P. Everybody good with that? True or false, I have my Z scores. True. So what's the only other thing I need? Sigma. So sigma is equal to the root of 0 0.074 times what goes next. Divided by what goes on the bottom. Yep, 1,945, your population that you sampled. So I'm going to figure out that number, 0 0.074 times 1 minus 0 0.074, and I divide by 1,945. What do I still have to do with that? Point zero zero six. Can we call it 0 0.006? Do I have all the parts that I need to calculate this? Yes. This group right here, you guys are going to do the first set. This group right here, you guys are going to do the middle set. And this group right here, you're going to do the last set. So everybody uses the same data. Everybody uses 0 0.074. Plus or minus, all of you have a different z-score though, right? So, so first group, you use 1.28. Second group, you use 1.645. Last group, you use 1.96. And you all use the same thing for sigma, which is 0 0.006. So see if you could come up with that. Go ahead, take a, take a minute. 
and check your result with your peers to make sure you have it accurate. I got 6.58 to 8.12. Can you guys concur? I'm getting a little, what what do you have there, Carson? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, if you're off by a thousand, or a, yeah, which would end up being, yeah, I, I mean, if this, you know, I guess, it, here's where I would really raise questions. If you ended up with, say, 6.51, uh, uh, you're off by, you know, a little bit more there than what I, I should think. But if you got, like, 6 point, you know, uh, six zero, I, I could live with that. It was probably just a little bit of a rounding error somewhere. And maybe it was on my part. Um in the middle one, I got 636 to 833. Can you guys confirm that? You had Okay, um, oh, I see the problem, folks. Um, I, I see the problem. Okay, this is my fault. It looks like when I took the original number, which was um, 143 divided by 1,945, um, so I didn't write down 0 0.0735. I wrote down 0 0.0734 for you guys. When I did my work on my sheet, I wrote it as 3.5. So that, that changed mine a little bit. So I'll make sure that I round up. But it looks like you guys are okay. All right. And then my last one for this group, I got 6.17 to 8.52. Are you about there? Okay. So, yep. So my rounding, I was off by f uh, uh, five points there. And so it looks like you're, you're at that same spot. Good. So can you set up a confidence interval? Is that something you're going to be able to do on the test? Simply take your percent, plus or minus whatever your z-score is, times sigma. Flip it over, the last one that we go through. A recent study shows that 521 of 2,008 high school students have tried using tobacco products in the last year. Write a confidence interval for 80, 90, 95 regarding the proportion of students who have tried tobacco in the last year. Round your numbers to three decimal places. I would like you to actually set this one up on your own. I would like this group here, I would like you guys to take the 90%. I would like you guys here to go ahead and take the 95%. And I would like you guys in the middle to go ahead and take the 80%. Okay? So instead of writing three, if you can do one, you can obviously do all three. So we're just dividing it up. So see if you can uh, figure that out. Again, remember, it's the percent plus or minus the z-score times sigma. That's what you're looking for. I'm going to walk around and kind of help you as you're walking through that. Your formulas are also down there. For people that are working, um, uh, the percent should be 0.259 and the sigma 0 0.0097. Uh, if you round it uh, to that three decimal spot, it would be 0 0.010. Um, so just to make sure you know if you're on the right page or not, give you another minute here. Please check your answers with those around you to see if you think you're on the right track. 
Okay, looks like these are the pieces that are come up with. Uh, they look pretty good to me. Uh, they fall in line pretty co closely with what I had as well. I'm wondering, are there are there any questions? So I come up with 24.65. I had 27.15. I just I I wrote my sigma out a little bit further, but otherwise I'm, I'm coming up with data that's pretty close to what everybody has here. Anybody? So my sigma, I went, uh, sigma was equal to 0 0.0098, so I went to four places. I will say that for this last one, this 95%, I was at 24 point, or I'm sorry, I was at 23.98 to 27.82. Did anybody else? Who was the 95% group? You guys were? Anybody else come up with those numbers? Okay, so that's that, and that's what that that's what Stephen had. Did did anybody else come up with my numbers? Carson, what'd you have? Okay, twenty four to twenty seven point eight. So your yours were much similar to mine. Okay, very good. That's fine. Sounds like we're all right about that number. So. The big question here is, and this is the last problem we'll do, and then we'll get to your study guide, and you guys can have the rest of the time today and tomorrow to work. But the question is, um, it says, consider the problem above up here. Okay, It says, suppose that 10 years ago, 22% of students tried tobacco products in the last year. So that's a statistic that we gained uh, last year. Is, uh, is our new percentage higher or lower? It's higher. Now, suppose that this statistic wasn't, 25.9%, uh, suppose it was 50%. Would you say that tobacco use is definitely on the rise? Yeah, especially since we've sampled 2008 students, right? Seems like that's a pretty strong number to be sampling. Sure seems like it's on the rise. It's basically doubled. However, um, when you consider this, 25.9 is not necessarily that much bigger than 22%, but we did survey 2008 students. I want you to talk about your peers for 20 seconds. Decide, do you think that it will, we will do a hypothesis test and come up with 95% confidence that it's on the rise, or no, it's not for sure on the rise. What do you think ahead of time? Go, talk. Okay. Uh, those who say, yep, it's on the rise. Those who say it's not conclusive enough. Looks like most people are saying it's probably on the rise. Let's confirm. We want to compare 25.9 and 22. And so we also want to be 95% confident. So this is what you need to be able to set up. We're going to set up this little graph here, 95. So that means I have what on each side? 2.5%, so that means that this mark right there is 97.5. So what is the z-score that we're looking at in that situation? Did I hear 1.96? So 1.96, now remember, if we come up with a z-score further to the right than 1.96, then this 22% is gone. We know that this new 25.9 is, is, uh, is more accurate. But if we don't come up with something to the right, then we accept the 22%. We keep that guy, okay? So let's compare these. So we're in order to compare them, we come up with a z-score. We're going to come up with a z-score. And z is going to be equal to 0.259 minus what? Minus 0.22. And what do we divide it by? Sigma. Do we have sigma yet? Where did we get sigma from? Our previous problem, right? Um, just for kicks, I'm going to use 0 0.0098 instead of 0 0.010. Just, it'll be a little bit more accurate. Are you okay with that? So, here we go. 0 0.259 minus 0 0.22 divided by 0 0.0098.
0.259 minus 0.22. Make sure you press enter, otherwise it will only divide the 0.22. Then I divide that by 0 0.0098, and I get 3.98. Does that fall to the right or to the left of the 1.96? Significantly, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah, you would say that the 3.98 is uh, kind of ridiculously to the right, wouldn't you? There is not just evidence. There is very strong evidence in this made-up study that the, uh, the percent of students who tried tobacco products in the last year is on the rise. And that's what we can say. It doesn't mean definitively that it is. It means that we can be 95% confident that it is. Okay? And, you know, that's 19 out of 20. That, that's pretty good. Statistics don't give us certainty. They give us levels of certainty. And that's why you have to be careful. You always need to understand it with the certainty that you're given. So, when I started this lesson, uh, last week, Wednesday, I told you I was worried that we may not understand it very well. I think the first day we were a little confused, weren't we? Have we come through that better? We okay? I think that this is, a, to me, this is the real interesting stuff of statistics because it helps us understand the world around us and that which you read within the news. And so um, this is what we want to end with. I want this last test to go very, very well for you. I have a study guide just simply front and back. I'm going to give it to you this time. You can start on it and finish up tomorrow. I'll have the answer key provided tomorrow. And I hope that the test goes just excellent. We can all... Uh, and on a great note to